the truth about your 401k that no one tells you. Now, this is a video I did that got quite a few questions. There's a lot of people wondering like, well, you say 401ks aren't good, but I think they are, or there's other people saying, what about these alternative plans? So let's dive into that. Um, we've got Sleepy Magil who says, what about a Roth 401k? Isn't that taxes that goes in? And could I also transfer that into my broker as the stock somehow? Okay, so a Roth 401k says, yes, you're taking after-tax dollars and putting it into the 401k. It grows tax-deferred, and under certain conditions, you can pull that out tax-free. Those conditions are you're over 59 and a half and a couple other provisions that might allow you to get to it for other purposes. So a Roth 401k might be better than a 401k because I think there's a high chance taxes will go up in the future. We're over $30 trillion in debt. Um, we've continued to have new plans that the government have, have rolled out that require quite a bit of spending, which might mean that they want to increase taxes in the future, especially considering they're increasing the tax enforcement um, by in, more agents and things like that with the IRS. So definitely, you know, it is a, a different plan that maybe you get to take the lump sum tax-free versus just tax-deferred that's taxable, like most 401ks. Put the money in pre-tax, but when you take it out, you have to pay tax on the back end. People like that it compounds, and you're not paying taxes on that, but it's also compounding the tax, and especially if the taxes go up, you might be in a worse situation. So a Roth might be a better option, but I would heed some warning. They could change the rules on that. I'm not personally in any IRAs or 401ks or anything like that. I cashed mine out when I was in my 20s and I just decided to invest more in myself and in intellectual property and things that way and non-government qualified plans like this. So um, depending on you know, your, your rules of your 401k, you might be able to roll that where you can move it over to a different broker and they can manage stocks individually, or depending on if you're still employed at the place offering the 401k, there may be provisions that prevent that. You have to check with the administrator. Mitch Alex, Garrett Gunnarsson, do you, do you think taking a 401k loan is a good way to fund whole life insurance policies? Well, here's one of the, the problems of the 401k loan. This is all money that's been pre-tax. You pull this out and you put it somewhere and then you have to pay the 401k loan back, but you have to pay that back with after-tax dollars typically. So I'd be a little bit careful with the 401k loan and funding other things, because what's the interest rate that you're paying on the 401k loan versus what is the cash value earning inside of the overfunded life insurance policies? If you're getting less of an interest rate on the cash value than what you're paying on the 401k loan, and now that 401k loan needs a payback and, and a specific plan, otherwise you can get taxation, I would just be careful with that type of thing. Although I like that you're just asking questions and these are some of the thoughts that you're having. All right, all right, Reggie, the... <laughs> Commenter. All right. He says he gets the part about the payback period triggering the penalty, but he's not understanding the value of the loan concerns. He's talking specifically about this 401k value. He says, if you borrow 5,000 from your 401k, they send you the whole 5,000. That is completely true, Reggie. They don't withhold tax from the loan. Nope. They send what you ask for. You pay back the same amount plus a modest interest. Am I missing something? Well, you pay it back on dollars that have been taxed to go back into something that is pre-taxed. So yes, you borrow the full 5,000, that was all pre-tax. Now you have to pay the 5,000 back over time with some modest interest, but you have to do that with after-tax dollars on your individual earnings. That's what you're missing, and that's what I'm saying with that. Hopefully that helps clarify that a little bit. Um, someone else is asking, you know, what about a tax break on the 6K of savings? So if you're putting money into a traditional IRA or a 401K, it goes in pre-tax. But this isn't tax savings, it's tax delaying. You have to, yeah, you'll pay less this year. So if I put, let me use simple numbers, 10,000 into a 401K, and I'm in a 30% tax bracket, I'm paying $3,000 less tax this year, absolutely. But the tax savings doesn't show up in my pocket. It doesn't show up as a refund into my life. It's actually inside of the plan. So the $10,000, if we really break it down, it shows up as a $10,000 in the 401k. But the reality is 7,000 of it's mine. If I pull the money out, 3,000 is the government's. Ah, but it's actually worse than that. If I wanna take that out before 59 and a half, it's only 6,000 is mine, 4,000 is the government's. So I'm actually at a tax disadvantage today. What people are gambling on is A, they're gonna be in a lower tax bracket in the future. Let's break that down. Number one, 
That either means you have less money, and based upon what we've watched right now with inflation, you better hope not. This notion of you can live off 70% of your income when you're retired, that was before, whoever said that the first time Amazon wasn't invented, you couldn't just click and things showed up to your house. I mean, if you're not working, when I'm not working, I spend more money. I just tend to do that because I'm, I'm out, you know, I might go shopping or buy something or click on something to order something. I mean, the other day I had a day off and I ordered a bunch of records. I love vinyl. What can I say? Um, so that's just, <laughs> I, I don't think you can live off less money because of inflation or that you would want to live off less money. So thinking you're going to be in a lower tax bracket in the future means you plan on having less success over your life. Now, maybe that's because people say, well, I'll have my mortgage paid off and have no car loans or student loans. Okay, that's fair, but you also are probably gonna need to make more money or have more money in the future to buy the same quality of life that you have today. The other thing is, I guess, that the government might lower the tax brackets, but I highly doubt that will happen because from 1944 to 1981, the tax bracket was higher than it is today. And you know what? We've been spending more now than we spent back then as far as the government's concerned. So I just think that there's a high chance taxes could go up. So it's not really a tax break or a savings because the money's stuck inside of the plan. You pay less tax because you didn't take constructive receipt of the money. You said, look, I'm going to take that 10000 and rather considering it income, I'll let it go inside of a plan to be held for a future date that when I go to utilize it will then be considered income. The question is, Will there be more or less tax? If it's before 59 and a half, there'll be a penalty and you're at a disadvantage. So a couple things to consider. Now, Chris uh, says it's hard to convince him that utilizing a 401k with a match is not good advice for most people unless it has some really terrible funds. So I I'll agree with you. Like the match is pretty compelling to help enhance the return and have money come in. So that may make sense unless people have double digit interest rates, unless people don't have enough savings account and they're simply putting the money into the match and then they're you know, having to borrow on a credit card and that's starting to cost them more and create a whole bunch of stress. And yeah, terrible funds, that could be a problem. He says he does agree to use the money at its highest and best use, which could be college and skills, et cetera. So that's great if that's what was intended by this. In his mid forties, he's halfway to an eight figure net worth. So he's halfway to 10 million is, is what my guess is there. Um, simply by investing in a 401k IRA from an early age, hopefully with the match, I guess, buying a personal home early and buying a second home with cash. That's awesome. You bought a second home with cash. I've seen several of your videos now saying it doesn't work out that way. So just giving viewers a different perspective. Look, it's very rare that this would work out. I've read articles on Yahoo Finance that show that most people with a lot of money in a retirement plan, it's because they put a lot of money in the retirement plan. That we've seen a lot of different market cycles where there's fees that are starting to reduce what the return is. There's volatility that reduces the return. There's just simply losing years that really start to cost time value of money. But sure, if you start early enough and you sock money away, you could end up with something great here. But the question is the opportunity cost on what other things are out there. What else could you do with the cash? What will that do with your overall return? Look at the bigger picture. A lot of people sacrifice so much to put money in a retirement plan and ultimately end up paying too high of interest rate on other things or don't fully invest in themselves to increase their income. It really sounds like in this case, Chris has done a good job with a lot of those things. And so is, is is doing well in his mid 40s and halfway to a good net worth here. The question, Chris, I have for you is how will you create cash flow with this? How do you protect your downside with this? I just am helping you by having those questions at hand so you can say, oh, yeah, that's a good consideration because you haven't paid tax on this just yet. So, how are you going to be more tax efficient in the future when you go to tap into those funds? But this isn't a bad situation that you've created. It sounds like a great situation. It's just that often people are overly reliant on a 401k that will never replace their income. When they have an income and they're neglecting creating cash flow and they're just deferring their taxes and they're setting it and forgetting it and they're hoping for the best and then all of a sudden interest rates are too low when they retire or the market doesn't quite cooperate at the level because of the timing. These are the things I want people to consider and just look at other options that can be cash flowing from day one where they can protect their downside, where they can discover their investor DNA so they can learn how to invest instead of just you know spread it thin and overly diversify. But this is 
part of the plan and you've done a good job with it, now consider your exit strategies, your tax efficiency, and your cash flow. And when you combine that with what you've already done, I think it's a pretty good situation. All right, so I appreciate your comments. I want to continue to urge you to, or, or just, I don't know, urge. Urge sounds a little extreme, but I don't know, uh, entice you. Uh, I don't know why I um, can't think of the best word, but it would just be great to encourage you. That's the word. Encourage you to make comments, make fun of me, roast me, whatever. Tell me what's going on in your life because I like to answer these and have this is great way to provide content for the people who are out there by understanding a lot of us have very similar situations or very similar circumstances or know someone in these circumstances. So if you ask the questions, I'm happy to answer it. All right, this is Garrett Gunderson. And remember, build the life you love.